Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, even in the early hours of today, we are still getting some exciting Kaldheim spoilers. So if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Finn the Fangbearer, it is a disgusting, uncommon commander that is essentially double infect. And yes, rules lawyers out there, yes, I know that infect works different than poison, but most people know the word infect versus poison, so come on. Regardless, check out Finn, an uncommon death touch poison commander. But before we jump into the spoiler for this episode, a quick spoiler warning. Again, with each and every single one of these Kaldheim spoiler episodes, if you clicked on this episode and you don't want to see spoilers, you clicked on the wrong episode, so go click on another one. Maybe go watch my deck tech on Feldergriff where you just give your friends a ton of hippos. Oh, and then you steal those hippos back and you kill them with their own hippos. <clears throat> but anyways, let's jump into it. So the exciting Kaldheim spoiler in this episode is yet another MDFC god with Cosima, god of the voyage, slash the omen keel. Or as I like to call this commander, Bodie McBoatface. And if you don't know that 2016 reference, make sure you just type that into Google and you'll understand very quickly. Regardless, Bodie McBoatface is the very first vehicle commander. And Bodie does some pretty awesome things, so let's get into it. Now the Cosima side is technically not a boat, so I'll call that Cosima and the other side Bodie, okay? She is a 2-4 god that costs 2 in a blue and she has a lot of text, so here we go. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile Cosima. If you do, it gains whenever land enters the battlefield under your control. If Cosima is exiled, you may put a voyage counter on it. If you don't, return Cosima to the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it and draw X cards where X is the number of voyage counters on it. So basically, we exile this, then we landfall a bunch, and then we can draw a ton of cards when it comes into play, and it comes into play with a lot of counters. After it's exiled, it's essentially protected card draw. That seems like a very powerful thing, and in the right build, we can draw a ton of cards with this. But let's move on to the Bodie side. Now, Bodie McBoatface is a 3-3 vehicle that costs 1 in the blue. It has crew 1, and it says whenever a vehicle you control deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles that many cards from the top of their library. You may play lands from among those cards for as long as they remain exiled. So, Bodie takes you to new lands, which are your opponent's lands, which you can now play. Bodie and its vehicle friends are going to smack your opponents, exile things off the top, and then give you lands to play. Then there are plenty of ways that you can switch over to the Cosima side, and when you're playing those lands, then you can eventually get some really cool card draw. Now there are a couple of different directions you can go with this commander, and a lot of things to consider, so let's jump into some cards. First up though, I want to bring up some similar cards to this commander. Because generally if you look towards similar strategies, you can find other cards that might work. So the first commander that came to mind is perhaps the most powerful and broken uncommon commander of all time with Tatiova Benthic Druid. Tatiova has whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. So Cosima isn't going to gain you any life, but it is going to have that card draw with the landfall. Now it is somewhat of a delay draw, which can be worse, but it can also be better in certain ways. Tatiova obviously has to be on your field to get that effect. But with Cosima, you build up those voyage counters while she's in exile and she's protected there. Now there aren't too many commanders that really remind me of the Bodie McBoatface side, but the close I could come up with at this time is Eryxmethes. Basically, Eryxmethy starts off as a land, and then you can eventually make it into a creature. Now, once it's a creature, it's permanently a creature, unlike vehicles, which are just temporary creatures, but still, there's somewhat of a comparison there. Again, this is the first vehicle commander, so it's a unique concept. Now, obviously, one direction that you can go or incorporate in your deck is to focus on lands. Bodhi can help get you lands, and Cosima can help you basically have landfall draw. So, I want to thank Eddie for pointing this out to me, but the Coral Helm combo is still in play. For those of you not familiar with it, it involves Retreat to Coral Helm, any kind of a creature that taps and puts a land from your hand into play, and then a card like Guildless Commons, a land that basically bounces back to your hand. Now, if you want to see this combo in greater detail, go and check out my Tatiova episode, but I'll just go through a high-level version of it. Retreat to Coral Helm has the landfall trigger. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You may tap or untap target creature. Walking Atlas has tap. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. And again, Guildless Commons is a bounce land, so when it comes into play, we have to bounce a land we control back to its owner's hand, and we can choose actually Guildless Commons itself. 
So the combo works like this. You tap Walking Outlet, you put the Gildas Commons into play, it bounces back to your hand, and you get that Retreat to Coral Helm trigger to untap Walking Atlas. Essentially, you get infinite landfall triggers. Or I should say, as many landfall triggers as you want. So in this situation, if Cosima is exiled, you can get as many Voyage counters on Cosima as you want. Then when you put her in play, you draw an absurd amount of cards, and then you take everyone else out with something like Psychosis Crawler. There are obviously other options like Laboratory Maniac, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, you don't have to include this combo or any combo in your deck, and there are plenty of other directions that you can take it. One direction that you can definitely take it is a heavy focus on vehicles. And if you've already seen my Galta Dinosaur in a car deck, you know that I'm a fan of vehicles for a couple of reasons. They're essentially creatures when you want them to be, so that makes them a lot harder to deal with. They can essentially get around any non-instant speed board wipe. Now, in this deck in particular, vehicles that already have some form of evasion are going to be really good, like Sky Skiff and Smuggler's Copter. Because again, with Bodie McBoatface in play, you're going to be exiling cards off the top of your opponent's libraries whenever you're dealing damage with vehicles, then you can play lands from those cards. And vehicles like the Looter, Scooter, Smuggler's Copter are even better for this deck because again, they've got an extra trigger. It has whenever it attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So that's a ton of value on top of what your commander already gives you. Now, if you are going this direction, you definitely want to include something in this deck like Gearport Ori. It's an artifact that says each player may play additional land on each of their turns. Now, this will help your opponents most likely, but it's going to help you the most because you're always going to have access to lands. Notably, your opponent's lands. And then once you're set up, this can get you even more landfall triggers for Cosima. Now, unfortunately, every vehicle does not have a form of evasion, but we've got other ways to help our vehicles get through. So one card that you might want to consider is a way to essentially give all your vehicles flying, in fact, everything you have flying with levitation. It's an enchantment for two blue blue and says creatures you control have flying. So this can be a great way to get your vehicles through for Bodhi, but it can also be a great way to finish your opponents off. And speaking of giving a vehicle flying, make sure you consider Rune of Flight. It's an aura rune that says Enchant Permanent. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. And as long as Enchanted Permanent is a creature, it has flying. As long as Enchanted Permanent is an equipment, it has equipped creature as flying. So essentially in this circumstance, it's going to give your vehicle flying when it is a creature. Now runes are a brand new type of card, so if you haven't seen my episode on what are runes, you might want to go check that out. In that episode, I go through some more scenarios where runes can be useful. But in order for vehicles to become creatures, we're going to need a crew. Now, obviously, ways to make tokens can be a great way to crew vehicles, but we also got some other ways that can benefit us when those creatures become tapped or untapped. For example, we've got some creatures that when they become tapped, we get an effect like Scare Tiller, Follow Sage, and Search Banner. Scare Tiller has, when it becomes tapped, choose one. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped or return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this can really help us in this deck, and actually this can be a walking atlas substitute as part of a combo. Because again, with it, we can just keep crewing a vehicle over and over again. And then with Follow Sage, when it becomes tapped, we can draw a card. And Search Banner has, when it becomes tapped, we can pay one in a blue. And if we do, we return target permanent to its owner's hand. So our crew can have a ton of utility just from tapping. And again, we can also have some creatures with some untap effects like Ghostly Pilferer, Arbiter of the Ideal, and Daring Thief. Ghostly Pilferer has, when it becomes untapped, we can pay two. If we do, draw a card. The Arbiter has, when it becomes untapped, reveal the top card of your library. If it's an artifact, creature, or land card, we can put it onto the battlefield with a manifestation counter on it. That permanent is an enchantment addition with other types. Basically, we get things off the top of our library for free, and if it's a land, again, that's really going to help with our landfall trigger. And then Daring Thief also has Inspired. Whenever it becomes untapped, we can exchange control of target non-land permanent we control and target permanent opponent controls that shares a card type with it. So we basically can give them our worst thing, and we can take their best thing if they share a permanent type. And speaking of switching, let's talk about some ways that we can switch around our commander. Now, I'm not talking about exchanging control with an opponent, but I am talking about flipping it. Because when you blink an MDFC, it comes back as the front side. So a card like Teferi's Time Twist, or basically any other blink spell, can be fantastic in this deck. Essentially, we exile Bodhi McBoatface, and it comes back as Cosima. So after Bodhi's done its work and gotten us a ton of cards off the top of our opponent's library's exile, so we've got a lot of lands to pick from, we bring back Cosima. Then at our upkeep, we exile Cosima, and then we get those landfall triggers. We put her back in play eventually, we draw a ton of cards, and we have fun. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my gut feeling on this card. And my gut feeling is very straightforward. I love Bodie McBoatface. I really enjoy the fact that we now have access to a vehicle commander in Magic. And actually, I think that we're going to be seeing more vehicle commanders in the future, and they probably don't even have to be MDFCs. If you haven't seen my episode on the 21 commanders that were cut from Commander Legends, go check it out. In there, I talk about Predator, which was a vehicle commander that was cut from Commander Legends. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.